Laurel Wilt um, sort of exemplifies one of the problems that we're dealing with um, when it comes to natural resources in, in the United States. It's introduced exotic species that threaten um, both agriculture and uh, natural forests. And one example of this is the, the red bay ambrosia beetle. They're, they're tiny, they're about, about the size of uh, Lincoln's nose on a penny, if you can imagine how, how big that is. This little beetle feeds on, on fungi, and it looks like a white mold essentially, but this fungus is carried in specialized um, structures inside the, the mouth part of the beetle. And the beetle bores into the tree, making very small holes, <clears throat> like you can see here, and inside of the tree it makes little galleries where it cultivates its fungus, its symbiont and the eggs hatch and the larvae feed on the fungus and they leave the tree carrying the fungus with them. Well, that fungus, when they introduce it into the tree, is capable of moving in the vascular tissue and the water conducting tissue of the tree and it causes the tree to basically uh, wilt and die very quickly. And so this is what we know as laurel wilt. And so we're trying to better understand the mechanisms by which this is happening and figure out how we, we can maybe manage this and, and keep this from causing all the, the impacts that it's causing to our native forests. There's a lot of different approaches that we can take and we, we're sort of looking at it from a holistic, you know, whole system approach that involves a lot of different collaborators. You need a combination of people that each understand the components and also the whole. And so then we, then we have a plant pathologist and then we have people who studied tree physiology and who studied the interactions between the fungus and the tree and the beetle. And we have entomologists who specialize on where the beetle came from, how it's related to others. Are others gonna do the same? But you also have entomologists that study the behavior of the beetle, that study how it's sniffing around and smelling the trees and deciding, the beetle, deciding which tree to attack and which trees to just pass. Lots of people are needed to even understand how it works. Uh, one of the things I'm excited about now is we're starting to understand some of the mechanisms in the avocado plant, the avocado tree, that are responsible for it uh, resisting this disease. And my hope is that uh, very soon we're gonna be able to come up with ways of managing the different varieties of avocado and use that information then to manage the disease successfully. One of the things that we've done is we've gone out and looked for survivor trees where most of the trees have died off, 95 to 99 percent of the red bays have died within three to four years, and we look for those rare surviving trees, those individuals that are still alive after the disease has basically wiped out everything else. And then we have vegetatively propagated those trees by taking cuttings and then growing new trees from those cuttings. And now we're testing to see if those have resistance to the disease. And as it turns out, some of them are, in fact, resistant. And so we have hope that we'll be able to use those resistant trees for restoration projects, to be able to maintain the trees for butterflies and, and other natural resources that, that we'd like to preserve. The more we learn about this disease, the more difficult we realize it's going to become to, to manage it. Uh, we've made significant progress. We understand so much more about the disease now than we did before. We have a lot more to learn. There is a lot of exciting re research going on. We have such a, a great team of collaborators and such supportive staff to work with. It's a really a fantastic place to work. Being in IFAS uh, is really good because we have so much support. We have stakeholders that are out there basically uh, arguing the, for the importance of IFAS and for what we do. And I think um, it's, it's really easy for the general public to see that IFAS is directly involved in solving problems that will help uh, make, if they're solved, will help make the state of Florida a better place to live. <laughs>